guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Morgan and... I'm Amy Jo Girardier. And we are talking about Gen Z, which is super exciting. We just had a really awesome discussion about it. And we're actually going to break the video up in two parts because it was pretty long. There's a lot to cover. <laughs> it was, yes. But if you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. This is part one of our Gen Z video. So I thought that first we would address the elephant in the room. You know, I'm not actually Mike Glenn. And I'm not either. Surprise. So, yeah, this is usually Mike Glenn's platform, but today we are doing a Mike Glenn takeover. takeover. <laughs> We're taking it over. We are taking it over. Um, so basically, Mike Glenn, he loves Gen Z. He loves reaching and learning about the younger generation. And we thought that we would bring on the expert. Ooh. Amy Jo over here. <laughs> so Amy Jo, tell us what you do here and we'll jump Go right from in. there yeah. huh yeah well I'm the girls minister and uh, do student missions here at Brentwood Baptist and uh, we have generation Z in our student ministry so um just uh, was kind of a surprise to me because I had thought for years that we had millennials and then lo and behold there were some things that started changing and uh, I thought uh this is not the same generation that we used to be working with. So mm. that's where where I started becoming passionate and interested in Gen Z and thankful that the Lord kind of um, led me on a um, kind of research with Gen Z. And so that's where yeah. I'm at. Yeah. it's. I feel like it's crazy because I used to be the generation that people always talked about, the yeah, millennials. Yeah, you're the most researched you know? generation. Yeah. And so now that I'm kind of out of that, now Gen Z is stepping in, I feel like there's a lot that I don't even know yeah. about them. Yeah. And so that is one of the reasons why we're here today, just to talk about them. And there's a lot of questions that people are researching all the time. So mm -hmm. I pulled those top questions. And so basically today we want to talk about those those top questions that you guys are asking about Gen Z. So Amy Jo is going to help us out today. Yeah. I'm really excited. Yay. Um, okay. So the first one that a lot of people are asking is just basically understanding who Gen Z is. So okay. if you can kind of help us give the overall understanding of who they are. Right. Well, and there's a lot of different uh, sources, I think, that are out there for me. I have really... Um, enjoyed uh, following the research of um, McCrindle in Australia um, and felt like when I was beginning this research there really wasn't a lot even in the United States that was mm -hmm. especially in our churches um, and so McCrindle although um, not a um, churched view of Generation Z has kind of aligned with what we have been finding in student ministry. So um, there are going to be different splices of the ages and everything, but um, the McCrindle view is that it's um, the current ages would be around 10 to 23 years of age would be Gen Z. So again, there's going to be what we're calling Generation Bleed, where you might have students that are um, right on the edge or hugging that line mm -hmm. and you're going to see some um, characteristics that fit within their age group as well but for the most part 10 to 23 okay so okay so and what kind of that's interesting my little sister is gen z yeah. i didn't even realize that um awesome. but so what kind of characteristics would you say are described the yeah. gen z right and um and I love this generation. So we're going to kind of have to talk a little bit. I don't want anybody to think that we're hating on a certain generation or anything like that. I think that um, we're seeing some really unique things out of this generation. Mm -hmm. But to look at that, you kind of have to look at their um, the way that they view the world. And so I would say because they're primarily parented by Gen X, which right. has been... Um, and I can say this about my generation, we were jaded and we didn't really know why. We were the latchkey kids, we we're all that. Um, and so that generation, for the most part, has parented Gen Z. And so Gen Z kind of grew up with this um, jaded view of the world. Of They were the first generation that did not feel like they could obtain the American dream. Mm -hmm. And so um, there was just 
it, well, if you look at Hunger Games, that would be a great right. movie that kind of characterizes them. When you look at Hunger Games, it doesn't start out with this sunny disposition. It's already jaded, you know? Yeah. And so there's this reluctant heroine that em- emerges. Um, this generation would be characterized by female leadership in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. You're going to see that in storylines that they embrace. So you've got Katniss Everdeen, right, who shows up on the scene. And she ends up, spoiler alert, saving the world, right? Mm -hmm. But she was reluctant all the way throughout. And so I think this generation, in a lot of ways, um, thinks that ultimately they're going to have to be the one that saves the world. Right. And at some point, they're just kind of reluctant, but they feel the weight of that responsibility on their shoulders. So there's anxiety, um, kind of a characterization of hopelessness. So if Mm. they don't know Christ as Lord, um, then they're doing this all on their own. And so you can kind of see that just the weight on their shoulders. They're not just going to school thinking about their problems. They're going to school thinking about their family's problems and all of the situation, you know, around the world, like they, they take all of that on their shoulders. Mm. So that is, yeah. And I think especially because I work within social media, and so I see a lot of that because all of the young people are on social media, but they're not, it's no longer just posting food or they're all posting their brand and putting themselves out there. And it's kind of, it seems like they all have their own entrepreneurial spirit. That's exactly very true about this, uh, about this generation. That's so interesting. And I think a lot of them, it seems like they're, it's not the whole, we have to go to college and we have to do this and we have to do this in the right order. It's mostly like, I'm going to find out who I am and what my purpose is in this yeah. world and I'm going to go for it. Right. Would you say that's right? Oh, for sure. Because they've given up on the American dream, right? Yeah. Going to college doesn't necessitate that they're going to be able to have the happiness that the generations before them, you know, bought into. So, right. um, yeah, in fact, they are um, choosing to not go to college, choosing to um, to create their own brands, do their own thing, um, make it on their own way. So, yeah. Do you think that social media has a big role within the rise of anxiety and within the whole pressure to be, to take on more than just themselves? I, I think for sure we're learning, even for more than just that generation, but yeah, they're constantly on Um, I think anxiety, FOMO, all of that, you know, wanting to always be engaged with what's going on and then realizing, you know, YAMO was another uh, abbreviation that came out of like, you are missing out. Like they Mm -hmm. knew, okay, I'm not just the fear of, like I am missing out. And so all of that pours into anxiety for sure. Yeah, definitely. Because you kind of switch from, I mean, I remember growing up, I didn't get Facebook until like junior year of high school. Yeah. And so now these kids are on Instagram and TikTok and whatever in middle school yeah. and they're seeing their friends go to these sleepovers or go to these events and if they're not invited mm-hmm. that could mm-hmm. take a big toll on oh yeah definitely you know, it's an experiment that we're watching live out before us. Like, we don't really know what social media is going to do to this right. generation and the generation behind them. Gen Alpha, for sure, is completely, their digital footprint is massive. And they may, you know, they're just babies, right? And yeah. so, um, or to age nine. So it's just interesting that we're seeing this experiment of how it's going to shape a generation. But, wow. yeah, it's kind of kind of scary for sure. But there's some really good things about, you want me to Definitely. share yes, the really good stuff do. about yes. them? So what we're finding is that with this generation and the entrepreneurial spirit, um, they if they understand that Jesus is Lord of their life, like mm. they have um, fully surrendered to that, and uh, they're walking with Christ and um, established in the word, like they're, they are um, passionate about making disciples. Right. And so they're kind of like, just give me the tools. Like, whereas before, I think with millennials and other generations, there was more of a, I'm going to watch you first mm-hmm. and then I'll do it, you know, right. but we had to kind of push more yes. this generation. And it was a struggle at first because there, it felt like, kind of a clash of authority but I think when you begin to understand they're just ready to go and Mm. do it so it's like how do you release them so that they can go make disciples 
right? Yeah. Let's remove as many barriers as possible, but create, and this is a, um, this is kind of what we talk with leaders and parents about is how do we create guardrails um, or like a phone, you know, like they're used to a phone that has particular hardware, right. but how do you allow them to make the preferences? You know, mm -hmm. how do they get to customize mm -hmm. it? So we've got to be able to tell this generation, okay, this is what you can change. Right. This is what you can just like run ahead in. Mm -hmm. But here's some things that you can't change. You know, like how do we help them understand the doctrine that they need to know and um, the guidelines that they need to know. So, yeah. and no, then just release so them. Right. Um, and so I like how you talked about the guardrails and actually that's a great parenting tip. And that's one of the questions that so many people have is how do I parent my Gen Z child? And so what kind of other tips would you offer in regards to parenting? Yeah, I think one of the things that we are seeing with parents of this generation, uh, I used to say that they were moving from helicopter parents where they're hovering to drone parenting where they're just kind of viewing from online. Mm. But I would say even now, just looking at some Barna research recently, um, they're doing both and, which is uh, complicated because they're choosing to drone parent on certain things right. and helicopter and others. So, um, for example, social media, technology, a lot of times I feel like parents are asking us, how do we lock it down? You know, like, how do we, and I get it, it's scary. Um, yeah. But I think if you, if you're um, walking with your student, I mean, it's a bigger issue if you're like, let's lock it down. Um, they're going to respect, hey, let's walk uh, and give you some freedoms and some respons responsibilities and help them understand how to have a healthy relationship with technology and I think a lot mm -hmm. of parents have just kind of hands off on that and then all of a sudden they're realizing I don't know what my kid is doing online right. so um, we really need to begin to look as parents like okay am I hand too hands off in this area am I too hands on in this area and and just that balance mm -hmm. but um, but I do think remembering it's kind of like a tug of tug of war you know like yes. um and uh there's a um speaker i can't remember his name right now richard ross he actually um had mentioned this tug of war analogy that that it's constantly you know like sometimes our students are going to pull on that rope just to know that you're there and it mm. feels like a tense battle uh but our job as parents is to release more and more of the rope not drop it Right. And so I think especially with this generation, they're going to tug a lot and it's going to feel hard. Mm -hmm. But eventually we're wanting they think maybe that they're ready for the rope to drop a little bit sooner in certain certain areas. So it's going to be more important to kind of sit down with your student and say, OK, here's where we're going to invite you into this and you're going to get to customize. You're going to get to be involved. But here's the areas where you're still a kid and we're still the parents. And so, you know, there's yeah. that balance there yeah. so how would you let's say okay I'm just thinking like practically applying that today if a parent let's say maybe drop the reins completely mm -hmm. how would you recommend pulling in those reins today like yeah. a practical advice for maybe a sit-down meeting and being like hey I right I apologize for being this way but yeah or well, I would say right now, can we put a plug in for the family podcast that yes, we're we can. doing? Yeah. So Link Taylor and I get to come in on a couple of those podcasts right now. Um, it's called Building Healthy Families. Mm. And uh, Link has done a great job of kind of walking through um, how to begin to have some conversations about relating and um, affirming and blessing your child. And so uh, I think some of that is... I think you're, I think praying first as um, as a family. I know that Definitely. sounds silly, but it is a battle. And so, yes. so I would begin first praying, okay, God, um, soften their heart before I even go and talk with them about these things. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, you're not going to just immediately take their phone if you've been hands off. You're right. not going to be able to immediately take. Yeah. Um, so I think it's just sitting down and having conversations. Um, begin asking them, hey, where do you see, you know, uh, our family going? What are some dynamics? Allow them to speak into it. And then just being honest. I think being authentic is going to be a huge thing. Um, 
it may be that you need some counseling to come mm-hmm. into that. And so I think there's just, it depends kind of where that family is, but right. praying, sitting down to talk, um, addressing some of the family things that they're seeing, um, and then just make it a positive thing. This is what I, I see for you, you mm-hmm. know, and this is how I want to support you and cheer you on. And this is where we need to be able to let the rope go by the time you go off to college. So we're not hovering, we're not, you know, doing all drone parenting or all that. Yeah. So um, I th- setting some goals as a yeah. family. Yeah.